Are you a data analyst looking to break into data science? If so, this video is for you. Many people start in analytics because it generally has a lower barrier to entry, but as they gain experience, they realize they want to take on more technical challenges, dive deeper into machine learning, or even just increase their earning potential. Moving from data analyst to data scientist can be a smart career move, but it requires the right strategy. If you're new here, my name is Marina. I'm an applied scientist at Amazon, and I've helped dozens of people transition into tech even from non-traditional backgrounds, myself included. In this video, we're going to cover everything you need to know to make the transition from data analyst to data scientist successfully. So what skills you need to develop, my favorite learning resources, and strategies for landing interviews and securing job offers. Let's get right into it. Starting with deciding if this transition is even a good idea for you in the first place. So right away, let's just make sure we're all on the same page about what the difference is between these roles anyway, starting with data analytics. Data analysts focus on working with structured data to drive business decisions. Their toolkit typically includes SQL, Excel, Tableau, or Power BI, and basic Python for data processing, visualization, and maybe some simple statistical analyses. The role centers on understanding historical data to answer questions about what happened and why. Data scientists build on these foundations, but extend into predictive models modeling, and automated decision-making. While they also use SQL and Python, they work more extensively with statistical modeling, machine learning frameworks, and cloud platforms. Their focus shifts to predicting future outcomes and recommending actions. A common misconception is that data analysts must become data scientists to advance in their careers, but that's definitely not the case. Senior analysts can earn high salaries and have a really strong business impact without deep ML or statistical knowledge. Honestly, not everyone is going to enjoy data science work, and many would be happier staying on the analytics path. So before we go any further, ask yourself the following questions. Are you curious about machine learning and how it works? Are you comfortable with, or at least interested in, advanced mathematics and statistics? Are you comfortable with technical challenges and software engineering concepts? Are you okay with a role that has a lot of ambiguity, both in the daily work and the career progression? If you're still with me and thinking, yes, I definitely want to pursue data science, then let's talk about how to make it actually happen. Let's break down the key skills you'll need to develop. We'll focus on four areas that form the foundation of data science work. If you're coming from an analytics background, you probably have some exposure to statistics, but data science might require a bit more depth on the math front. You'll need to be comfortable with multivariable calculus and linear algebra, particularly matrix operations and gradients for understanding machine learning algorithms. But don't worry, you don't need to be a math expert. You just need enough to understand the fundamentals to help you grasp how algorithms work. You'll also need probability theory and hypothesis testing for experiment design, as well as statistical concepts like different types of distributions and regression techniques, and ideally, some experience with causal inference. Next, on to programming. If you're already using SQL and basic Python in your role, you'll have a head start here. Now it's just about leveling up. Focus on more advanced Python, so things like object-oriented programming fundamentals, writing modular and maintainable code, unit tests, performance optimization, and so on. Also, you'll need to be comfortable with machine learning frameworks like scikit-learn, TensorFlow, and PyTorch, and familiarity with basic data structures and algorithms for coding interviews. Generally, this will just be questions on arrays and strings, so you don't need to go too crazy with this, but it will be important to know for interviewing. We'll also need to spend some time learning more deeply about machine learning. This is another core pillar of data science, so you'll want to be comfortable with machine learning fundamentals like supervised learning, so regression and classification, unsupervised learning, things like clustering and dimensionality reduction, model evaluation and validation, deep learning basics, and these days being familiar with GenAI is a plus, but by this I mean learning how to work with APIs, not really training models from scratch. Finally, many data science roles involve working with large-scale data sets and building automated pipelines. For this, you'll want to work us on working with cloud computing platforms, so on AWS that might be services like S3 and SageMaker, data pipeline development using tools like Airflow, and potentially basic system design principles for scaling your solutions. This is more important as you become more senior or focus more on ML though. Now that we've covered what you need to learn, let's talk about how to actually build these skills. There are a few different paths you can take, and the right one for you will depend on your budget, learning style, and schedule. If you're self-motivated and disciplined, self-study can be a totally reasonable option, and it's definitely the most cost-effective way to transition into data science. The key is consistent practice and choosing the right resources. Here are some great courses I'd recommend checking out in this order. So start with the deeplearning.ai mathematics for machine learning and data science specialization. This covers linear algebra, calculus, and probability and statistics, so you'll have a solid foundation for the next things you learn. It's presented in a really accessible way, so don't be scared about starting with math. Then check out the classic Stanford machine learning specialization, which will give you a really solid introduction to ML fundamentals. After that, the deeplearning.ai deep learning specialization, at least the first three courses. And finally, as a bonus, I'd recommend the generative AI with large language models course, also on Coursera. 
This is super short and it's a good way to get familiar with modern AI applications. You'll also need to get an understanding of basic data structures and algorithms for coding interview prep. For this, I enjoyed Educative's Grokking the Coding Interview Patterns in Python course, which focuses on common patterns for data structures and algorithms questions. I found this really helpful so that it doesn't just seem like you need to know the trick to answer the leak code problem, at least not as much. And a few books that are also really worth reading. Practical Statistics for Data Scientists is a great resource to deepen your statistical knowledge, along with examples in R and Python. Hands-on Machine Learning with Scikit-Learn, Keras, and TensorFlow for practical machine learning examples. And Software Engineering for Data Scientists. This book is great and can help really bridge that gap between the kind of coding you might be familiar with for analytics and production level code. There are tons more, but this would be my top three. I'll include a link to all my favorite technical books below because there's a lot more to explore here. The most important thing when going the self-study route is consistency. Make a schedule and stick to it, even if it's just a little bit each day. Which brings me to the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant. Transitioning into data science requires strong foundations in math, machine learning, and computer science, and Brilliant makes these complex topics approachable through intuitive visual learning, which is my favorite way to learn. What I love about Brilliant is how they break down advanced concepts into bite-sized interactive lessons. Whether you're brushing up on calculus, learning linear algebra, exploring Bayesian probability, or even learning how LLMs work, their visual and intuitive approach makes learning a lot less intimidating. This is a really good option if you don't have a ton of time to study, but you still want to make progress. You can learn on your phone during your commute or lunch break, you know, just instead of mindless scrolling. I personally used Brilliant to strengthen my math foundations before I took a really challenging deep learning class in grad school, and it helped a lot. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now maybe you're thinking you'd prefer to have a little more structure and outside accountability in your learning. If you don't want to commit to a full degree, boot camps can be another option. Some pros of boot camps are it's fast paced, so you generally complete them in a few months. You have a structured curriculum because everything is laid out for you, so you don't have to kind of piece together your own learning plan. And there's community support because you'll get to learn alongside peers and get mentorship from instructors who may actually be folks who are already working in the field, which can be really valuable. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that boot camps vary in quality and they're not all super valued by employers. So before enrolling, do your research, check reviews, talk to alumni and make sure they offer career support. For those looking for a deep dive into data science with extra strong networking opportunities, a master's degree can be a solid investment. This is especially useful if you're transitioning from a non-technical background or if you're worried your background won't be passing resume scanning tools. The downside is obviously that master's programs can be expensive and time consuming. You know, there's opportunity cost there. The good news is that there are now affordable part-time and online programs that allow you to study while you're working. So for example, Georgia Tech's programs are really affordable and they're pretty decent quality. Finally, mentorship. No matter which path you take, mentorship can be incredibly helpful. Having someone to guide you, provide feedback, and help with career navigation can make a huge difference. Here are some ways to find mentors at your company. So if your company has data scientists, ask if you can collaborate with them or shadow. LinkedIn, so join data science groups or reach out to professionals. Online communities like Reddit, Discord servers, and Slack groups can be another avenue to connect with fellow learners and professionals in the field. Or hire a mentor. If you're serious about leveling up quickly, investing in a mentor can be worth it. Okay, so you've learned all the skills you need. That's great, but how can you prove to a potential employer that you actually can do the job of a data scientist now? I have a whole video on how to build a portfolio and get experience outside of your full-time employment, which I'll link in the description. The TLDR there is that you should try your best to do self-motivated projects that allow you to simulate the working conditions of being on the job as closely as possible. But if you're watching this video, there's a decent chance you're currently working as a data analyst already, which gives you a whole other set of opportunities you can leverage within your current role. So for example, let's say you're regularly creating reports in Excel or Tableau. You could automate this process with Python scripts, maybe even add some predictive elements. Or if your company runs A-B tests, volunteer to help with the statistical analysis. If you have a data science team, try to collaborate with them on a project. And if there isn't a data science team, pitch your employer on some potentially impactful projects that would also help you learn. Best case scenario, this can result in an internal transition. Worst case, you now have concrete examples of impact and real data science projects to include on your resume. If you're able to transition internally, then great, you're done. If not, here are some strategies to help you get that first data science role. First, let's talk about how to position yourself online. Your resume, LinkedIn, and GitHub need to tell a consistent story that you are already a competent data scientist. Because if you have the skills and you've done solid projects, you are. So instead of writing data analyst seeking data scientist role, you might say data professional specializing in predictive analytics and machine learning. When it comes to your GitHub, make sure to put your best stuff at the top here. 
This is especially important for analysts because your coding skills might be under a little bit more scrutiny. So pin your best ML repos at the top, write clear readmes that explain your approach, make sure your code is well structured and documented, showing you understand software engineering principles, and add visualizations and results to showcase the impact, which should be easy for you with your background. Once it's time to apply, prioritize hybrid roles. These are positions that sit between traditional analytics and data science, and they're often an excellent stepping stone. For example, lots of companies, including big tech firms like Meta and Amazon, have roles that they call data scientist, but are actually more like advanced analytics positions. And honestly, at many companies, the lines are blurry anyway, so use this ambiguity to your advantage. When you're networking and preparing for interviews, leverage your analytics background. Use your deep understanding of business context, clear communication skills, and examples of how you've influenced the business to deliver measurable impact. Other candidates who may be more technical than you might struggle with the business and communication side of things, so don't be afraid to lean into your strengths. Remember, this transition isn't going to happen overnight, and that's okay. What matters is consistent progress. Every line of code you write, every concept you learn, every project you complete, it all adds up. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content about breaking into tech careers. Drop a comment below if you have any questions, and I'll try to respond to as many as I can. And if you feel like you could use some help making the transition or building a custom study plan, book time to chat with me one-on-one -on -one below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.